Hey guys, this is Justin for breaking CRE.com. And in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about how real estate private equity companies actually make money. So if you're looking to break into real estate private equity for the first time, or you're looking to do your own real estate syndications and wondering how you're actually going to make money for investing other people's money, definitely stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial modeling. So if you're looking to break into the real estate investment industry for the first time, or looking to advance your current real estate investing career, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Now, private equity is one of the most lucrative industries out there, and it's really no surprise. When you're responsible for managing hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of assets on behalf of equity investors, and you're able to leverage other sources of capital like debt, private equity firms can control huge assets with very little of their own capital invested in the deal. And real estate private equity firms are no different. But in real estate, how do these real estate private equity companies actually make money for investing in real estate deals? Well, there are really five main ways that commercial real estate investment firms make money investing capital on behalf of equity investors. So let's go through each of these step by step. So number one is acquisition fees. Now the acquisition fees are fees paid to the real estate investor for going out and finding that commercial real estate property and closing on the deal. Now this is often a very time consuming process and not just on that specific deal. So usually commercial real estate investors will underwrite and analyze 50 or 75 or 100 deals before they actually close on one. So it's a very time consuming process and also a costly process to go out and find an acquisition opportunity on behalf of an equity investor. And because of that, they're generally compensated for that acquisition. Now this is usually anywhere from about 2% of the purchase price for very small properties down to about 0.5% or 50 basis points for larger properties that are over 50 or 75 or $100 million. Now, number two is asset management fees. Now these are fees to compensate the investor for actually managing the business plan, the budgeting, the investor distributions, and anything else that is really at the asset management level of that deal. So again, this is a very time consuming process that that private equity firm will take on on behalf of its limited partner equity investors. So it makes sense for that investor to be paid for those efforts. Now, usually this is paid out as a percentage of either the equity invested in the deal, the total effective gross revenue of that deal, or even the net or gross asset value of the deal if the property is going to be reassessed every single year. Now, number three is construction management fees. Now, construction management fees are going to be paid out for managing the construction process that is going to occur at the commercial real estate deal. Now, oftentimes this is where the value add comes in, where the investor is really creating value through the investment. So this is going to be an extremely time consuming process. And again, the private equity company will take care of all of that for its limited partner investors and therefore is compensated for that work. Now, usually you'll see this as somewhere between four and 8% of the total capital costs on the deal. Now, number four is disposition fees. Now disposition fees are fees paid to that private equity firm for managing the sale of the property. So even though you have a broker that is going to facilitate that sale as the investor, you still need to be able to go through the broker opinion of value process, choose a broker to actually market the property, get together all of your due diligence materials that you're going to present to that potential buyer, and then ultimately choose a buyer and go through that transition process. And there's a lot of work that goes into that and oftentimes because of that, a private equity firm is going to receive some sort of a disposition fee, usually somewhere between one and 2% of the overall sale price. Now, number five, and probably the biggest and most important isn't actually a fee at all, but this is promoted interest. Now, this is really where the waterfall structures come into play on the deal, where the private equity firm promised its investors a certain rate of return. And if they achieved over that rate of return, then that private equity firm is going to receive an outsized proportion of the profits based on the amount of equity they invested in the deal in the first place. Now, this is usually one of the biggest ways that real estate private equity firms make money. So if they are investing only 5% of the equity in the deal, but then getting 20 or 30% 
of the LP's share of the profits over an 8% or 9% or 10% internal rate of return, especially on bigger 50, 75, $100 million deals, that profit starts to add up quickly and the promoted interest on the deal can be really significant for a private equity firm. Now, what's great about these fee structures is that generally what they do is create an aligned win-win scenario between the general partner or private equity firm and the limited partner capital investors that invest with that private equity firm. So for acquisition fees, private equity firms need to be incentivized to do all of the work up front to find commercial real estate acquisitions on behalf of their investors. Same thing with asset management fees, construction management fees, and disposition fees. As a limited partner investing in a private equity company, you wanna make sure that your interests are aligned and by having these fees set in place, it makes sure that the real estate private equity company is doing its job in each of the main categories of actually acquiring, managing, renovating, and ultimately selling a deal. Now, the reason why this is often a preferred structure between a real estate private equity firm and investors is because it creates an alignment of interest on the overall returns of the deal. So by keeping most of the compensation on the back end, what that does is it makes sure that the private equity firm's main focus is achieving the highest rate of return that they can for the project, which ultimately creates great returns for both the limited partner, capital investors, and the real estate private equity firm itself. So there you have it. Those are five of the most common ways that real estate private equity firms make money and how it's a win-win for both the real estate private equity firm and the capital investors. Now, if you're looking to break into real estate private equity for the first time, I put together a free real estate financial modeling crash course that's gonna teach you the foundations of what you need to know to be able to build real estate financial models from scratch and analyze deals so you can have that same foundational skill set that's used in the top real estate private equity firms across the globe. So if you wanna learn more, it's a free class. Just click the link in the description below and you'll be taken directly to that enrollment page. Now, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel and sharing it with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.